This is a pretty cool horn, huh? And this was one of the inspirations for the horn that we now call Copernicus at our shop. So stay tuned to this video and I'll discuss all about this custom Adams A8 trumpet. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having a fantastic day out there today. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with us for all of our cool videos, including this one, which is a very fun horn. Now, this horn uh, was a recent trade into the shop, actually towards a Copernicus, just to give you as a heads up. Um, and it has a, a fair amount of issues, so we can't sell it at the moment. But uh, I'm slowly working on these issues one one at a time here but the Adams A8 trumpet is super fun now the A8 trumpet has this which is a threaded integrated mouthpiece receiver so it's a whole it's a twin tube and sleeved system that once you integrate the mouthpiece and in this case this is a, um, a titanium coated mouthpiece for my uh, allergic reaction then this zero gaps into the the lead pipe now we can make the a8 with any sort of gap that you want if you wanted a standard gap uh, mouthpiece gap or if you wanted something else um, but we also make all of the mouthpieces so you could always set up the receiver and then we can set up your gap on these the only problem with the a8 Is that is that it takes quite some time to change uh, mouthpieces and since I make mouthpieces it doesn't work so well for me uh, because I want I want to change um, anyways let's take a look at this beautiful horn uh, it has two shepherds crook now this is an early horn completely handmade I think Neil made this one love the bracing on this horn isn't that cool bracing is just beautiful and they got the coca bola or no, these are, this is rosewood buttons. Um, then you have two very unique shepherd's crook bends. This one, see how that's, it's quite different than what Copernicus is. Same with this one. Uh, this was an early prototype. Uh, this serial number is in the 46,000s and now I think Adams is in the 53 or 54, uh, maybe 52,000 range. So this is a pretty early horn for them. Um, uh, large bore 470 uh, it has a good balance though the the thing about it is because of the weight of the receiver it's not a super heavy horn but because of the weight of the receiver it doesn't like feel really heavy like an a4 to me feels so it's got a very good balance the the bell on this horn and let me show you that so that's a gold brass bell let's see yeah, you can see that says gold brass. Maybe, there we go. Still working on the camera here. Um, it's a five and a half inch bell, but it's actually a 40 thickness. 40 thickness means that if you watch right here, I can actually flex that bell. I can actually squeeze the bell. It's very delicate. And in fact, this one has a whole bunch of dents and pings on it um, because it's so delicate. I prefer a slightly heavier bell, but with this combination, it works quite well. Um, it's so much fun. You heard a little bit of this. Now this is, the audio in my shop is uh, not as good as the audio in my house, but it's still pretty good and I have uh, another ribbon mic here that I'm using. So let me turn off my talking mic and play some for you on this. The mouthpiece, by the way, is a 3C.
One thing I will say about this horn is that due to the integrated receiver, the targets on the note as you ascend, normally on trumpets due to the overtone series, of course, is that as you ascend, the targets get smaller and smaller and closer and closer to, to each other. While this still remains, remains true on this horn, it feels like the notes and the targets are actually staying slightly larger throughout the entire register. So when I play like an overtone series, those notes seem to be much more even. So there is a benefit of this, not just because it looks cool. I think a lot of people say that, oh, it looks cool, man. It, there's a reason for adding mass here. Think about all of the proponents of the heavier weighted mouthpieces. Now, the only drawback with that, I mean, remember, everything affects everything. The drawback with that is that it will take away some of the brilliance of the instrument. Now, what Adams did, and I think it's really, really smart, is they made this horn with a lighter gauged bell. So you get this really easy targeted horn that can sound very dark. It can sound dark. But because it has great efficiency, it can actually pop really nicely. So it's a pretty super cool versatile horn. This horn is available as a custom order. This one is not for sale. As a custom order, you can reach out to us at info at austincustombrass.com to discuss pricing and options. The other thing I always say is that this horn was one of the original inspirations for what we sell now called Copernicus, which I wish I had a Copernicus to demonstrate versus, but we can't keep them in stock. They sell as quick as we can get them made. And Adams is on their annual holiday right now. So as soon as Copernicus gets back in stock, we'll do a follow-up video comparing the two horns. Thanks again for watching this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Stay up to date with us. If you ever need anything from us, just reach out. Thanks again. Take care and happy tooting.